Tamiya's 1964 Honda S600 in 124 scale. It was tooled in 2015, uh, though I think there are some parts from the 1997 S800 kit mixed in here as well. Doesn't really matter because it's a really good kit and everything looks nice anyway. Now, you should be able to find this kit for under $30, uh, just about anywhere, I think. It's pretty readily available. Uh, along with all the plastic that you get in there, you also get, of course, the decal sheet, as well as a small sheet of metal stickers. There's little to no flash present, and the chrome parts are engineered to minimize the need for touch-up, so most of the gates are actually on kind of the back side of the chrome, so it's, it's very nice. Now the body is engineered in a way that hides uh, the mold line for the most part, except for uh, along the back of the, the boot, uh, along the back of the boot lid, it's, it's kind of obvious there, and also where the uh, uh, the gap between the headlights and the uh, grill opening. So it, it's hard to see, but it is there and uh, you will need to clean that up. The clear parts are really nice. Uh, they're all very nicely molded and there was no distortion on them that I could see. As far as the construction of the kit is concerned, you can more or less break this up into a few major components. The engine can be mostly assembled uh, ahead of time. The, the one part you'll probably want to leave off is going to be the fan. But other than that, you can fully assemble the engine, uh, paint it up, and apply the decals, and then put the fan in place. You'll want to leave the fan off because I think it'll actually get in the way uh, for some of that. The chassis, it, it can also be largely assembled. Uh, you'll want to leave off the drivetrain and some of the suspension, though the, the lower portion of the, the, the lower part of the suspension for the front can be put on, and uh, really the whole rear end, with the exception of that, that, uh, that drive chain, that drivetrain is, is about all you really need to leave off. Now the wheels are pretty neat. They're assembled in four parts and uh, they are attached using poly caps. So they're completely movable and uh, they, they fit on very, very nicely. Having said that, the soft rubber tires are absolute dust magnets. So be prepared to deal with that. And they turn. The interior, uh, it's, it's really nice. It's very straightforward. I mean, there's not a lot of bells and whistles or anything. It's, it is what it is. It's fairly simple interior on that car. And uh, the tub is separate from the two interior side panels and dashboard, which makes it really nice because then you can do all the work to paint up those interior panels separately and do all the detailing and everything before you assemble it. The seats, are molded with the back panels open, but that doesn't actually matter because when you when you mount them into place, that's hidden up against the back panel of the, the interior. Also of note, the, the decals for the instrument panels are really nice and they, they went on very, 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 very nicely. And uh, they do a great job of adding some nice detail to the interior. One thing I will say is that when you go to assemble the interior tub to the body when you go to make that final assembly. Be aware that there is kind of a small ridge along the interior of the body that you can get hung up on can, and it can make it really hard to, to fit those pieces together. So you may want to make sure that you get in there and kind of smooth that out. I ran into a little bit of a problem with that and it uh, it, it did eventually, man I did eventually manage to force it on there, but it, it was a little scary. One other issue I ran into during assembly was with the hood, and this I am I am reasonably certain is entirely my fault. You can see it doesn't quite settle down in there, and I'm 95% certain that is entirely my fault. I when I was dry fitting it, the fit went on just fine. 
when I actually did the assembly, I think I, I screwed up the, the little holding piece for the, uh, the hooks that allow you to open and close it. I think I, I messed up placing that in, and as a result, the, the hood's sitting a little, a little far back. That's my fault. Now, attaching the chrome is very straightforward. I didn't really have any, any problems attaching the chrome. Uh, one exception to that is with the driver's side door handle. So for whatever reason, I don't know entirely, the holes on the panel on the body and the posts on the door handle itself did not line up and uh, when I was trying to, uh, I broke it. <laughs> And I didn't do a horribly great job repairing it, so it, it ends up, it looks a little mangled, unfortunately. But uh, make sure that you, you uh, do a good job of, of ensuring that fit before you try and assemble it, which is what I should have done and I failed. Now, aside from those couple of minor issues, this kit goes together really easy. I mean, you can build up in sub-assemblies very quickly and get this all the assembly work done in a weekend really the the one part that's going to take longer of course is going to be all the the curing time for the paint and the clear coats but this is not a difficult kit now my results were a bit lackluster but i would say that that's down to a few things one is that i I'm usually in too big of a hurry and don't do as good a job slowing down and, and checking those finer things as i should also i'm not much of an automotive modeler so i didn't get as enthused about this kit if you're an enthusiastic automotive modeler you'll love this kit it's a really great kit it goes together really easily and uh, if you're a, a, a more experienced modeler you'll get a really good result if you're a beginner, you won't really have much to fight with. This will go together very nicely. So a great kit and I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hobbying.